Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Senate Committee on Environment and Agriculture. And today we, on our agenda we have uh, the reappointment of Janet Coit. We have the advice and consent hearing. And I would like to begin the hearing with a roll call of those who are attendance because we do have some new members on the committee. So, Madam Clerk. Touching ball. Senator Coyne. Present. Senator Golden. Present. Senator Goodwin. Present. Senator Kettle. Present. Senator Sosnowski. Present. Senator Walaska. We have a quorum, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Uh, as I uh, said, we are here today to meet on the governor's reappointment of uh, Janet Coit uh, to the as the director of environmental management. And um, at this time, uh, I want to announce to the committee. I think they all have in their packets. We have received one letter uh, from the Rhode Island Party and Charter Vote Association endorsing um, the reappointment. And um, with that, I would like to call uh, Director Coit forward if she'd like to say a few words and address the committee. Uh, excuse me, uh, Madam Clerk, Director Coit. Okay. Little change in plan, Director Coit, if you'd like to step over beside the clerk and um, so everyone can hear what you have to say, because we all want to hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Chair Sosnowski, Vice Chair Conley, and members of the Senate Environment and Agriculture Committee. Um, it's great to see some new members, including my Senator, Senator Coyne. I'm honored and delighted to be nominated by Governor Raimondo to be reappointed as Director of the Department of Environmental Management and also to be considered for advice and consent from the Senate. In my conversations with the Governor, she's made it clear that she values our natural assets and that she sees them as part of our economic vitality. She has high standards and high expectations and I look forward to working for her administration and I expect to deliver. I owe a lot to the General Assembly, and particularly this committee, so thank you. Your wonderful chair and members have worked very closely with DEM. You've always had an open door and been willing to talk through issues, um, discuss new ideas, and I can quite honestly say some of the things I'm the most proud of um, are things that were initiated in this committee, things like working to promote Rhode Island seafood to coordinate climate change policy across state agencies. So. Um, I expect to continue to work with you, but it's a terrific committee filled with leaders who care about Rhode Island's environment. As you know, DEM has jurisdiction over a very wide uh, variety of issues. So it's important to every Rhode Islander, and it's very multifaceted, whether it's waste remediation or uh, permitting um, alterations to wetlands, whether it's dealing with fishing access or hunting seasons. Um, whether it's emergency response to chemical spills, supporting agriculture, um, uh, dealing with um, the uh, growth of our aquaculture industry, managing and operating our commercial fishing ports, our parks, our state beaches. It's a very important, diverse department, and it's a privilege to be the director of DEM. Over the past four years, with the support of Governor Chafee, and I'm very grateful to him for uh, originally appointing me and for supporting me over the last four years. I think that we've uh, made a lot of headway at DEM. That's probably one of the reasons I'm being reappointed, but I really want to give credit to the staff at DEM because they've worked closely with me, and I think that we've been able to um, improve significantly processes within the department and improve DEM's reputation, which in turn um, increases its value to the constituency that we work for, which is the public. So. Our mission is to protect, restore, and manage our natural resources and to preserve and improve our quality of life. Significant mission, and as mentioned, very linked to the economic vitality of Rhode Island. 
Under my leadership, I've advocated the department's success depends on delivering top-notch service to our customers and on making our regulations and processes easier to navigate. This is a work in progress. Um, I'm confident that I've laid the groundwork to continue to take this to the next level. I firmly believe that how we communicate with the public and how we deliver our services is critical to achieving our mission. The department alone isn't going to um, keep the bay clean or um, make sure that we have the diversity of habitats. It requires municipalities, partners, everyone in Rhode Island to be part of that agenda. So I'd like to briefly cover a few areas where I think we're making headway that I know are priorities for Governor Raimondo. The first is promoting Rhode Island's assets. You're all proud of how beautiful Rhode Island is and our bay and our beaches and our rivers and our woods. Um, these are critical both to the quality of life but also to tourism, to our growing agricultural uh, presence, uh, to commercial and recreational fishing that support thousands and thousands of jobs. I mentioned aquaculture, that's growing dramatically. So our natural assets are central to our economic vitality and we're very proud of our, our state parks and beaches. Um, I see uh, Senator Waleska has been very critical in securing Rocky Point for the public. We have an opportunity now to further plan for and develop that park so it can meet its potential. It's very exciting. Um, we have the upcoming Volvo Ocean Race at Fort Adams State Park. Those kind of events attract tens of thousands of people each day. They put us on a world stage. People come, they stay in our hotels, they spend money, uh, they are um, revenue generators. So I think one part of my vision is that we really embrace our, our natural assets and our amenities, our parks and our beaches, and use them quite intentionally to promote programs and events that support economic development or economic vitality in Rhode Island. Um, we've worked very hard with you, especially the chair, on growing our local food and agriculture sector. Um, there's great promise here and continued investment in this area is needed. Believe it or not, we've seen a 45% increase in the number of farms and a 14% increase in land and production from 2002 to 2012. So we have a lot of people interested in farming and it's tied very closely to other aspects of food-related business, including our excellent restaurants. Um, commercial and recreational fishing sectors, they're strong. They're not, um, people are worried about the ground fish crisis in the Gulf of Maine. We have a diversity of species, squid, fluke, quahogs, um, scallops, lobster, that are coming into our ports. It supports hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue and just directly for commercial fishing, 5,000 jobs. Um, recre recreational fishing also, and I'm glad you mentioned the party and charter, um, uh, association because those are small businesses too, the charter boats and the, and they also support hundreds of jobs and millions of dollars into Rhode Island. So working with them has been a real pleasure. Uh, we all know Narragansett Bay is a vital natural resource and it supports shipping, boat building, fishing, marine trades and tourism. Continued investment in the bay is needed, but we have made huge progress in cleaning up Narragansett Bay and we should all take pride in that. We've reduced dramatically um, over 90% the number of toxic chemicals that make their way into the bay, actually closer to almost 100%. Um, we have met the goal that you set to reduce nutrient uh, pollution into the upper bay by 50%. We're seeing areas that are um, open to swimming for the first time. We're seeing areas um, where people can shellfish and continue to harvest after um, intense rains. So we're actually watching the revitalization of the upper uh, Narragansett Bay. Um, so that has cost ratepayers and taxpayers money, and there's more work to do. But when you see something like the Providence Boat Show um, that's opening on Friday, supporting marine trades, they're very into recreational fishing. They actually have a fresh um, catch section where they're promoting Rhode Island seafood. It's all linked to our environmental quality. I wanted to mention um, brownfields remediation because that's another area where I think um, we have both a great track record but more opportunity ahead. You included in the bond that the voters approved last November $5 million for um, a brownfields remediation program. And we have thousands of those sites across Rhode Island. We do a pretty good job now. I think we could do a better job 
and work to incentivize people to reuse these former industrial sites using that bond money to help motivate assessments and remediation, and then um, trying to do more to expand our pad ready concept that we used at Quonset and um, Mr. Leader with the I-195 lands to try to do the permitting and the work ahead of time so, th so that these sites are ready for safe development, redevelopment. Um, Finally, I, I wanted to, to end this part by just talking about the way that climate change intertwines with any of these initiatives. Um, you've been leaders on this committee and taking a look at how climate change affects the environment and the economy of Rhode Island. Um, it's something where we need to be practical. It's happening. Um, the bay's warming, sea level's rising, and what we want to do is make sure that we have strategies in place. We're seeing it already in our commercial fishing industry. We're doing a major port improvement, and we're accounting for the fact that we have sea level rise at a constant rate and that we have storm surges that we need to anticipate and plan for. So I just wanted to commend you and say that being practical and thoughtful about how the state uh, addresses climate change is good for business and it's critical for our, for our communities, particularly coastal communities, but it's also true on our rivers um, and in general in our urban areas where we're seeing heat effect and other issues with air quality. So that's a huge challenge, but something where I think Rhode Island can be really best in class because we're already stepping up and doing a lot of work and we have um, a coordinated um, discussion going on amongst our state agencies. So thank you for supporting that work. And that really does intertwine with everything that DEM does, but it's much, much broader than DEM. It's about energy policy. It's about infrastructure. It's about health. Finally, um, probably what I'm the most proud of and when I look back is working to improve the culture and the, in, um, to promote customer service within DEM. So I think you know that um, Amico worked with uh, DEM to to produce a training program where we trained every single staff person and tried to develop new protocols and just to be responsive and respectful to people. And again, you have to constantly remind people to do that. Um, but we also found um, a way of addressing our business process improvements through what's called lean, and I've briefed you on that before. But it's been very successful at engaging the folks at DEM and taking a look at permit processes, particularly high volume areas where we focused initially and looking where we can reduce steps in the process, standardize our approach so that we can deliver clear, predictable, reliable, and more efficient results. So that's been, um, there's dramatic uh, uh, tangible benefits to that. Um, one of them was our new permit application center where we have one consistent way for all permits to come in and we have uh, notice to people within 24 hours whether the permit's complete and where it's gone. And then we have um, better information for tracking the permit turnaround time so that we can troubleshoot and make people accountable. So it's something I'm talking to the new Commerce Secretary about and that needs to be expanded. Uh, but it's needed. Regulatory reform isn't just um, eliminating old uh, anachronistic regulations. It's also just providing good communication and uh, clear processes so people know what it is they have to do. And then we have to live up to providing the, the service and the time frame that we set out. So that, um, we're launching the second phase of lean and I've been involved in a lot of exciting conversations with the new administration about how lean can be useful uh, it, for DEM and other agencies. So I think that there are many challenges, um, despite some of the budget issues that you're confronting, um, despite some of the areas where we have um, lost FTEs. It's a time of great opportunity. And um, given the beauty and diversity of our natural assets and how they attract people to Rhode Island and how much people care about the environment in Rhode Island, that environmental bond was the highest, maybe not more than some of you, but it was the highest um, vote. Uh, it received the highest percentage of votes of all of the um, bonds that were on the ballot and all of the major statewide races. And to me, that says that people across Rhode Island really care about the quality of the environment. So uh, what I'd like to do is continue the momentum, um, work with Governor Raimondo and all of you to further promote the work that we're doing at DEM, um, connect the environment to the economy, which is an obvious connection, um, but one that sometimes people don't see clearly. So what I can do about that is promote what's uh, special about Rhode Island um, and whether it's uh, eating fresh corn or reeling in a stripe, uh, striper or looking you know, through your binoculars at a 
diving Harlequin duck off Satchewis Point. Um, they're really special aspects of Rhode Island, and if we all celebrate those, I think we promote the brand or the things that are that are, make Rhode Island a place where people want to live and work. And so I'm very eager to work hard with all of you and continue that work at DEM. And I'd be, love to talk with you further or to, to address any questions you might have. So thank you. Thank you, Director Coy. Uh, are there any questions from committee members? Senator Wilaska? Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I think my mic is on. Director, I, I'm glad you mentioned at the end of your uh, uh, talk uh, about the culture of DEM. I, I think under your direction, DEM has come a long way in trying to change the culture. Because uh, if you talk to the business community a number of years ago, uh, business people, if they, they were – they had to deal with DEM. That was probably a real trial and tribulation for them. Uh, and I still hear that to a certain extent. And I, full disclosure, speak from, I speak from personal experience. Um, I think that DEM needs some, some of the uh, staff, maybe the enforcement division, maybe the legal division, I think they got to be thinking more about uh, remedy, remediation, than punishment. And I, I sometimes get that impression from other business people uh, and in, uh, certainly with uh, my dealings with, with the department. Uh, as I say, I think you get the message, and I've said this before, so I'm not just making it up now, but I don't know that everybody in that department gets the message as to cooperation uh, with the business community, both big and small. Uh, and I, certainly on environmental issues, I have probably more waterfront than anybody in, in, in the state. And, and so I can appreciate the efforts of DEM on behalf of those, although Sue doesn't think I do, but I don't have to measure that at some point. I have a lot of waterfront. But in any case, uh, I think you do a great job with regard to the, the bay and, and the waterfront, and I really appreciate that. Um, so I, I make that comment. The second one is you mentioned Rocky Point, and I, your efforts uh, and DEM's efforts and, and the city of Warwick, Scott Avedesian, have, have been very fruitful, and the park's beautiful. It's my neighbor. I step out my front door, and there's Rocky Point. Uh, we did have a meeting yesterday, and some of your representatives were there with, with the mayor in his office, and uh, I just want to mention uh, my, my concern about the events that have been not so much scheduled, but where various uh, groups have expressed interest in having events at Rocky Point, I would just caution, and, and I know I think the mayor feels the same way, that it, a go slow attitude would be best. I don't have a issue with. I know the gulls. I know the president feels, but the gulls want to play a ball game there and the Philharmonic. That's all well and good. As far as some of the concerts and carnivals, maybe we ought to go slow because if we make one mistake in the very first year, the community will be up in arms, and, and as they had been early on when there was no parking. So I just would like to do, make sure that we have a go-slow attitude. You know, I'm a little parochial because that's my district, and I know the DEM has got the entire state to be concerned about, and I can respect that. But please remember to respect the, the community around Rocky Point, which I know you will, but I, I said I would mention it to some of the council people and my rep, and I, and I am. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Velasco. Uh, any other comments or questions? Uh, Senator Oshenbaugh? Thank you, Madam Chair. Director, my, I don't have questions as much as I have comments about your time with the Environmental Committee in my first term last year. Uh, just some observations. Uh, first, I'm impressed with the fact that you were so proactively involved with the committee. I saw you virtually every session, if not every session, and you were a stalwart advocate for the different issues that you've touched on today and that you believed in. Uh, secondly, uh, you have a passion to you that uh, is about you even as you talk now where you really uh, come off as extremely sincere, and, and I know you are. And I think that without passion, uh, one can sort of get flat in their effect and not really want to achieve the objectives that they set. Well, you, you've got an overabundance of passion. It's, it's all about you, and, and I think it's worth noting that because you take it. I'm not trying to flatter you. I'm telling you what I really see. You carry that about you when you're in committee and when you testify, and I admire that. And there were a few times uh, in the past uh, term where uh, there were issues that were somewhat controversial and that people would dig in on and that weren't easy to 
uh, hold your ground on, but you held your ground and you kept an open mind and you remained a zealous advocate for the DEM, and I admire that. So I was concerned with the new governor as I thought about the different department heads. I had said to myself before there was a transition, but I wonder if uh, if Gina is going to keep Director Coit. I really hope she does. And then when I found out that she kept you and you were going to be reappointed, uh, I was very happy, truly very, very happy about that. So I say with an open heart and an open mind that I look forward to working with you again. Uh, you know, I tend to talk too much in these committee hearings, but uh, you have the same type of passion about your issues and you believe in what you say, and I admire that greatly. So I'm really glad that you're going to be at the helm and continue to be at the helm, that you are at the helm and will continue to be at the helm. And uh, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for the state of Rhode Island. Thanks. Thank you, Senator Oshenbaugh. Uh, Senator Kettle? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair and Director. I uh, think you've done a tremendous job with uh, DEM and the interactions that I've had have been uh, all pleasant. And uh, I've had several constituent issues, and your office has been uh, terrific. Um, I come from a very rural district. And uh, Western Rhode Island uh, is very special to me and a lot of my constituents, um, and I campaign on keeping the area rural, and that's one of my initiatives. And I'm just curious if you've had any uh, initiatives over the past four years of uh, preserving land or um, just overall keeping uh, the western part of our state um, rural, and if you plan on continuing that in your next uh, four years. Thank you. Uh, so we share uh, a great interest in keeping that um, beautiful area of the state rural. And we have worked closely, as you know, uh, with the towns and with some of the um, nonprofit organizations to try to acquire land that will fill in, in holdings, that will make a green corridor, uh, that will continue to preserve the quality of the watershed and continue to provide areas to hunt and to uh, hike. So that is a priority area, and in particular, um, continuing to just um, make those connections. We've done some work developing trails, as you know. So with the open space grant money that we have and the, um, the, some of the federal money that we get, we will continue to devote um, attention to both managing the properties in the western part of the state and as a conservation priority. And they really are special. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I understand, you know, you got the whole state to uh, manage. And, you know, just sometimes when I go door to door, people, you know, don't think that they live west of, one, you know, 295. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I appreciate your initiatives and uh, look forward to working with you again. Thank you, Senator Kettle. Uh, are there any other comments at this time from uh, members of the committee? Uh, Senator Conley, Vice Chair Conley. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I also wanted to join Senator Waleska in letting you know, Director, how excited I was when I heard that Governor Raimondo was reappointing you. Um, I think that you've done a lot of good work at DEM, a lot of good work uh, in balancing those interests between business and, and the environment. Um, and I, I took that as a signal that we're going to continue in that direction. Um, one of our guiding principles um, has been that we want to communicate to the state that what's good for the environment is good for the economy, and I think you've done a, a great job in doing that. Um, I also wanted to note that in looking at your resume uh, from 2002 to 2003, the Nature Conservancy taxed you with their conservation finance and policy program in their Caribbean division, and I just <laughs> wanted to uh, acknowledge what a difficult tour of duty that must have been for you. Um, <clears throat> um, I think you've done uh, <laughs> tremendous work with uh, EC4 already. Um, I want to thank you for that and um, ask you if you could comment a little bit on um, how you see um, the EC4 going forward. Sure. Thank you. Well, someone had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, uh, in my conversation so far with Governor Raimondo, she, uh, you, you won't be surprised, sees climate change issues through an economic lens. And so really working closely with the new Secretary of Commerce on some of the economic issues around making sure businesses get right back to work if there is a storm or um, finding innovative ways to approach developing green infrastructure or um, uh, retrofitting facilities and infrastructure will be continue to be a focus. I think that the um, 
the brilliance of the EC4 was getting the work that CRMC is doing or the work that um, our emergency management agency is doing and all of the funding and all of the brain power we're putting to bear on climate change issues and have everybody talking and working together. So I think that um, there will be some new faces around that table, but the coordination this morning I was at a, a meeting with CRMC and EPA looking at coastal adaptation and uh, the, the coordination with statewide planning with all of the agencies involved will continue with a focus on uh, assessing what vulnerabilities we have as a state, particularly with things like infrastructure, and then looking for ways to take the federal money and other money that we have, whether that's conservation dollars, so you're trying to protect more land in a floodplain, or whether that's uh, um, hazard mitigation money so that we're doing the smartest uh, things that have multiple wins. So I think that the coordinating council will be actually sort of reinvigorated um, with the new administration and uh, looking for some very innovative ways to approach the financing needed and the projects needed to both mitigate and also prepare and adapt for climate change. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Conley. Uh, are there any other comments at this time? Um, uh, Senator Golden. Good luck this direction. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Director Coit, I, I just wanted to also mention that um, I've had so many constituents in, in, um, in my district on the east side um, comment on your leadership and have appreciated um, your particular focus and, in environmental management and being able to recognize that um, it is critically important that we protect our environment um, and not, not view that as um, something that's in conflict with our economic development, but a way that we can build on it together. So I want to pass that along and thank you so much for your work. And it's been a pleasure to work with you over the past couple of years. Thank you, Senator Golden. Um, before we have final comments from the committee, um, I want to uh, let everyone know that we have a witness sheet here of one person, uh, Al Betancourt from Rhode Island Farm Bureau, who is not here to speak but is in uh, favor of uh, the reappointment. And I would just ask if there is anyone who has come today who would like to speak and had not signed up. And if you'd like to come forward, please. Uh, if uh, Director Coit wouldn't mind. No, I'm happy. You can relax a little bit for a moment, Director Coit. Okay. Thank you. My apologies for missing the sign-up sheet. Oh, welcome. Just uh, let us know who you are. Welcome to the uh, sure. committee. Uh, my name is John Marcantonio. I'm the executive director of the Renowned Builders Association. And uh, I'm honored to speak here on behalf of Janet Coit and her nomination to serve as DEM director. Uh, almost four years ago when I took the job I'm in now, uh, the largest complaint uh, that I got repeatedly uh, as a newbie in this role was about DEM. Uh, I was told to expect problems, poor communication, battles over everything. So just get used to it. That's the way it is. You're in this role. You know, go fix it. You know, whatever. Well, I'm not sure how or when it occurred, but either Janet, who was new to the job as well, uh, reached out to me, or perhaps I did. Uh, either way, we, we did meet. It was going to happen. Uh, and since that day, I, I've known her to be what all of you in this room know her to be, uh, intelligent, fair, very fair. A good listener, a team builder who can bring folks a very, I won't say very opposite uh, perspectives, but people certainly have different perspectives together, and someone who has a very, very large passion for her job. Um, so, But I'm, what I'm really here to tell you, though, and, and the reason I ask for your approval of her reappointment is that Janet, she gets things done. She, she gets results. Um, she has accomplished many things at DEM and needs to be able to continue that progress. So when so many complain about government's lack of action, Janet stands out as that results-oriented problem solver. And all the compliments aside, I ask that you continue the progress on the process um, and on the regulation by accepting Governor Raimondo's request to, to reappoint Ms. Coy. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments for this witness? Thank you it doesn't happen that often. The Builders <laughs> Association and the environmental community both agree that she should be the person for the job. So. Yes, it, it, it's, it's duly noted. We thank you very much for, for coming here today and sharing your testimony. Um, we have, I, I'd like to make a, a comment, a final comment, before we uh, vote. And um, I've had the privilege to work very closely with Director Coit 
since she's been the director, and it's uh, uh, it's been an enjoyable experience. Uh, there's been some difficult hurdles that you have that you have faced, and you have worked very well. Um, you've been a proven leader, and you not only care about the environment, but you also care a lot about the staff and employees at the department. And um, and I really have to say how much you have worked to uh, rebuild, uh, strengthen our natural uh, a natural resource-based economy in our state, and um, that means a lot. And it's it's in the difficult economic times we've had in the state of Rhode Island, the natural resources-based economy has done well under your leadership, and and I hope it will continue to do uh, that that same uh, same pr progress. Um, but thank you. And uh, at this point, if there's any further comments, no further comments, um, then we could uh, I would entertain a motion to move advice and consent. Senator Coyne. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that the Senate Committee on Environment and Agriculture recommend that the full Senate grant advice and consent to Janet Coit as Director of Department of Environmental Management. Is there a second? Second. Uh, seconded by uh, Senator Rochenball, uh, uh, Majority Leader Ruggiero, President Piva Weed, Senator Kettle, Senator Connolly, Senator Goodwin, Senator Alaska, Senator Golden, and myself. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Um, maybe to, we should have a roll call vote, uh, Madam Secretary. Yes. Senator Golden. Yes. Senator Goodwin. Yes. Senator Kettle. Yes. Senator Sosnowski. Yes. Senator Wolaska. Yes. It's unanimous, and uh, congratulations, uh, Director Coit. The Senate Environment and Agriculture Committee recommends that the full Senate grant advice and consent to your reappointment uh, as Director of uh, Department of Environmental Management. Congratulations. <laughs> and with that, I would uh, entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Okay. We have such a motion by Senator Alaska, seconded by Senator Conley. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you very much.